Good evening, everybody. Prospector Jess here. How may I help you find more gold? So tonight, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on another topic related to what we just talked about. When we're finding placer gold, one of the things we do in the process of sampling and site surveying is take pictures. We've talked about that. But there's another thing like that or related to that that you might want to take a notice of, and that is uh, something you may not feel like you're really qualified to do, but you ought to try no matter what and learn. And the reason is it's really valuable, especially when it comes to understanding what you found on your site and where the gold might be in the future. So stay tuned, wait a minute, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So finding placer gold, drawing, that's tonight's topic. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. Well, this thing, for example, when we look for gold, one of the things we should take into mind is kind of the art of drawing. Why is that? Well, because when you draw things out, two things happen uh, that are really important. One is you begin to think about how in the world this whole thing fits together and kind of what the causality of the gold moving around or depositing is. The other thing, part two, is I don't know about you, but my memory is not so great. I might remember something in six months, but I certainly won't remember it in a year. Okay? And so what happens is, this is one way to jar your memory. Okay? One way to keep in mind the things you forget. And that is by drawing it down. And, you know, I always remind you of these notebooks I carry around all the time. Um, and the reason for that is pretty simple. You know, hey, look, I got all this information in here. I can pick up later and it's you know, dated and everything, and it tells me what I found. Now, that's your typical college line kind of notepad, but you can see by these pictures that my preference is these good old engineering pads, quad rule, if you look in the, through them, you can see it. You can't really see it in this picture too easily, but it has these little crisscross lines. And those crisscross lines come in handy if you're trying to draw things like a map. So. One thing you can do is get these composition notepads over at uh, Staples. Look at that, from Staples, okay? And uh, buy them on discount, usually around August, because that's when they go to the back-to-school specials and all that stuff. But here's the deal. These things come in handy because they have all these rectangular quadrule kind of things, and that allows you to quickly map out stuff, typically like this. And in so doing, you'll end up with some pictures of your site. Now, what you want to do is mark down things that are important. Remember the pictures we took last time? Mark down where you got the pictures. You don't have to mark down or put the picture in there or try to draw it in. Just simply draw a rough sketch of where things are relative to, say, north and a rock and a hard place. Okay, And by doing that, you've given yourself a chance, you know, a fighting chance to get back there in the future when you discover that you didn't look for gold the way you were supposed to. You know, remember last time we talked about this in sampling placer gold, taking pictures, pictures, right? And then mapping all that stuff out comes in handy when you try to figure out where in the world the gold is. And so one of the things that I want to kind of show tonight is a couple of examples of that kind of drawing, drawing, you know, but it's as simple as putting a compass to a map. Okay, and then sketching out a couple of areas where you found the big nuggets. The objective being that you can kind of get back there again and try the new new detector you just got or the new, you know, pan or the new uh, gold sluice box or dredge, gold dredge, suction dredge, anyone. Okay, but you can get back to these places. You can also predict from where you've been finding to where it might be going. That's what I teach in all of my you know, systematic prospecting is how you put all this into a bigger picture so that you can follow the gold streak. Okay, look for that pay lead wherever it takes you. And so that's one kind of view. The other view that I wanted to bring to mind here is as simple as drawing a, a sketch or an outline of where the heck the gold is going based on how it goes, in this case, downhill, downstream, down to bedrock. Okay, all of this side view kind of thing parabolic trajectories and all that. It's just simply looking at how gold travels. 
once you understand a little bit about how that works, now you can start predicting on your site. That's what this is supposed to depict. You know, top view looking down along the flow where the gold you found might match the gold you might find next. Okay. Oh, what's that all about? I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, now with that in mind, of course, you put that together and you start sampling and putting together your pictures. You see what we talked about last time? And pretty soon you're following the pay streak downstream or upstream or uphill back to the pay lead that it originally came from and finding the load source that we're looking for, that elusive source of massive amounts of gold. Doesn't always happen, but the fact is really hard to do that if you don't start taking notes. You don't start keeping track of where the stuff is and mapping it out. And that's what tonight's all about. Real simple tip, draw, practice it. Don't be afraid of, you know, rough sketches. They're, they're your friend, okay? Uh, when you do that kind of thing, it, it really comes in handy uh, and gives you a chance, a fighting chance, like I say, of finding it again and also in, you know, going forward and looking for more. Um, you just never know how handy one of those drawings might be and you know frankly how crude some of the sketches can get and I don't mean crude in a bad way I mean crude like you know hey I don't draw very well well it doesn't really matter just put in two things X and Y axes a couple of markers in there that give you an idea of you know this is a boulder giant thing and this is a big tree now trees are kind of sketchy for long-term longevity in maps if you find maps of old times you'll find a lot of people marking by the old oak tree old oak tree burned down 20 years ago okay so you got the problem um boulder not so much but trees that's a problem so one of the things you want to be able to do uh in in looking for these things is kind of map out where it might be so that you can find yourself back to this kind of thing and recover the gold because that's really what we're all about. But the way you do that is by working with your with your sketches. And I really suggest that you just start practicing. Draw a few things out, map them out. Uh, there's a whole thing we used to learn in Boy Scouts called orienteering, and you, you learn how many paces or how many yards it is or how many meters if you're you know if you're in that metric system. And you kind of lay out where things go and how much drop there is and things like that that are important how fast the flow was, how wide the stream got, you see the picture. And you just start plotting those things out, even if it's rough, and then put a few, a few key measurements on it, that can take the roughness out and turn it into some real data that you can use later. And so that's the whole idea is just kind of going through and mapping things out, uh, or drawing things up, or sketching out, you know, like I said, uh, sketching out the good stuff, uh, ending up with a picture that looks, you know, like this one, which I open up, you know, could be something as sketchy as this. <laughs> you know, you just simply show where you're finding gold traps or what they look like. The shapes of things oftentimes are, plays a huge role in how they behave in trapping gold, for example. This is all about gold traps, another story. But the idea is, if you learn to draw them and how they're shingled and which direction they're flowing and where the cracks and crevices are, you see what you start having? You start having a kind of a way of thinking. Now there's, there's a third thing that these drawings do and that is they allow your brain, this computer you carry around with you all the time, to process what you're seeing. What I keep emphasizing, if you're hunting for gold, one of the things you've got to do is practice seeing with your brain what it is you're looking at. And that takes practice, but also one of the ways you can practice and help accelerate that is simply processing it in your brain for a moment and drawing it out. And there are times when you look at it and say, that can't be right. At that point, you might be on top of an aha moment, okay? You might be discovering something unique about your site, or you might have found out that you got it wrong and you're looking backwards, okay? Either one of those is a win for you. That's what helps you find gold. And so that's what tonight's about, is just learning to use drawings to help you figure out uh, the sketchy parts of gold prospecting. And that's it for tonight. Take care, good prospecting, and happy Easter.